So control center of your RV is mainly all located on, on this wall here with the uh, small cabinet pantry doors. The two upper buttons are for your outside porch light and your awning light. Um, up is off, down is on. Uh, down here, you shouldn't have to mess with your, your battery disconnect uh, button. That's for when we store it long term. Your awning in and out button, you press and hold the out button to roll the awning out. Uh, one thing of note is when you have the engine on, this function does not work. So make sure the engine of the RV is not running. Um, next here is your step lock. And what that's going to do is that's going to, right now it's locked. When you close your screen or your outer door, the step doesn't automatically retract. If the switch is disengaged, and you close the door, it automatically retracts your step. And your last is a stairwell light uh, right down here, uh, just to give you a little bit of light at night. Um, this is an auto gen start. You really shouldn't have to use this. Um, if you are boondocking, uh, you can enable the auto gen start by pressing it up and it watches your battery voltage and the temperature in the coach and will start the generator to run the AC or other things uh, if needed uh, to keep the coach maintained. This last one is your uh, battery inverter. Um, this converts the 12 volt power uh, being made uh, by the coach to uh, 110 uh, for certain outlets in the RV. Um, if this is not on, none of the outlets work while you drive. If this is on, um, certain outlets work while you drive, but not all of them. Uh, if this does start beeping, it means the battery voltage is low. Um, and if it won't stop once you've started the coach or it's plugged in, um, I would suggest turning it off and then power cycling it back on and it'll reanalyze. Moving up on this wall, you can see the control center. Um, there are several um, buttons on it, starting with uh, slide extension, which we have another video on. Uh, your tank heaters, which you shouldn't need to use uh, unless you were in cold weather. This is to keep them from freezing. Uh, your water pump, so when you're plugged in to the RV park and well or city water, uh, you want that off. Um, otherwise, leave it on and it pulls from the onboard 75 gallon storage tank. Uh, the next two have to do with your water heater. Uh, if you're connected to electrical, um, I would suggest running the 110 to heat the uh, water. Um, if you're not connected to the 110 if you're driving and want hot water or if you're boondocking, turn on the uh, LP gas. The little buttons above that um, are indicators. If you press and hold the button, it tells you how much uh, of whatever is there. So LPG is uh, liquid petroleum gas or your propane. Uh, this is your house batteries. It shows they're fully charged right now. Your fresh water tank is full. Your black tank shows two thirds full. Sometimes these sensors are a little finicky. Um, so just know that this is kind of a guide. It's not necessarily 100% accurate. And your gray water tank, uh, these sensors are a little bit more accurate. Uh, and last up here is your generator. Uh, the way that you start your generator is you're gonna hold the stop button down and we'll see if we can do it because we are connected to shore power. Till the light goes red, then press up and hold. You'll see it blink. And just hold it down until you hear the generator start. And then the light stays on. And as you can see, you have uh, 600, there's 662.9 hours on the generator currently. And you get a certain amount of hours with your trip. And then to shut off the generator, 
simply hit the stop button.